Hello everyone, my name is Colin and you are watching Classy Herbs. I'm here with Colin, who you know from Classy Herbs. You'll probably see this on both channels and our backgrounds full of chameleons are a little different because we're actually in the back room of Manhattan Reptile World today. <laughs> <laughs> what we are doing is we're talking about tegus. And you can see this one is really running all over. Yeah, he's making a fool of me. Cool in here. You know, we all kind of have our own things we do at the shop. And one of the things that I do is I mostly work all the venomous stuff. That's why you see the rattlesnakes and all of that. Colin works all of our big lizards. He's kind of our leopard gecko guy, which I know isn't big, or bearded dragon guy, also small. But he's also our monitor and tegu guy. So he is an expert at these. And Colin, what do you got here for us today? Yeah, so um, I have the two species of Argentine tegus right here. Um, now these are not Colombian tegus, the easily mistaken that people buy in pet stores all the time. And Colombian tegus are not nearly as good a pet as Argentine tegus are. Uh, and the dad right here is making a... <laughs> a difficult situation for me. But um, these guys make very good pets. One of the smartest lizards out there. Definitely up there with any monitor and alligator. Um, probably one of the most emotional reptiles I've ever really come in contact with in the way that once they get bonded with you, they actually want that attention, unlike a lot of other monitors and alligators. So um, Tammy here is kind of our mascot here at Reptile World, and she is a red tegu. So Red tegus come from the southern portion of South America, where it gets really kind of cold in the wintertime, so they have a tendency to really uh, hibernate and go to sleep in the wintertime. The black and white one here um, is going to be from more northern South America. Um, and in the wild, there's a little bit of overlap in their habitat, but not a whole lot. And so, um, even though they look very, very similar, they are separate species. and. Um, they never really interbreed in the wild just because uh, they have to breed at different times of the year. These guys usually breed in the spring, they usually breed in the fall. It's just how it is um, because of the, the climate that they're from. Uh, and really the only difference is their color. Yeah, he's going all over the place. He wants to run. Yeah. But I don't know if you saw this guy right here that looks a little bit different than both of them. Um, we that actually... like a croc death roll right there. Yeah, he's starting to roll, roll around on me. Um, but very few times has it ever been done where uh, someone has been able to actually hybridize the two species. And um, I had to kind of mess with their hormones and their lighting and the, the timing of everything. But last year I was actually able to get that black and white male, who was making me look like a fool out here, to breed with Tammy. Um, and she's a red taggy, like I said. And then this right here is the resulting offspring. Uh, not very many of these alive in the world. That is a pure 50-50 black and white to red hybrid. Um, it doesn't really quite look like what I had hoped. It kind of just made it brown. <laughs> but um, I, I, I hope that when it gets older, it gets a little bit more color in. Uh, um, honestly, we didn't even know what to expect because, like I said, it doesn't happen. <laughs> and we got it too, fortunately. So we were pretty lucky, and I felt very, um, like it made me feel really good as a reptile breeder to get something that shouldn't happen to actually happen just by knowing what you're doing, taking care of them properly, and uh, when they're ready, they're ready. <laughs> See, Tammy here is the perfect example of a pet tegu. She's not even moving. I don't think she's moved since I set her on the floor here. Um, I can say we took this animal to Chicago, and literally hundreds of people at Tinley Park stopped pets, scratched this animal. If you did, you remember petting Tammy there at her man ripped on the table, say hi. Yeah. Because uh, I'm sure somebody that's watched this probably did. And she was just an angel the whole time. She was out most of the show. We gave her a few breaks when she'd kind of get a little bit tired of it. But she was a really great ambassador while we were showing people what Tegus could be and selling the babies. And Cole, I remember when you hit this project and how excited you were. Uh, and I know you said it doesn't look like you hoped, but is that black and white close by? Grab this. Oh, Don't run away, buddy. Ugh. But if you take a look at these, you can start to see, I think, you know, this almost has a striping, mm -hmm. and this has a striping. What's weird is this doesn't have as yeah, much striping. It, has a it reminds pattern. me of digital camo from a military. Yeah. So I think it came out really cool, and you can see the red tinge coming into it as well. Mm -hmm. Now the legs look a lot like black and white legs with the spotting, but the color's different. So you can definitely see the hybridization. I can see it in there anyway. Yeah. Now, is that how it came out looking as a baby, or how has this thing changed? No, it definitely has changed a lot. When it was born, it was a very... I mean, its head was obviously green like all tegus, but its body was like a copper color. 
not exactly red, not exactly black and white either, but it was very like rusty kind of colored. Um, and now that it's gotten older, it's kind of turned more of a gray brown. Um, I'm not really sure what it's going to do by the time, it's only about a year old, not even a year old yet. Um, by the time it hits that, um, you know, full maturity, not really sure what its colors will look like. I think it's a female as of right now, just by kind of feeling around on it, but um, tegus are one of the harder large lizards to, uh, to sex when they're young, so um, just kind of my best guess. But you can tell when the, the males mature, they get these big jowls. You see these big fat sacks under his chin there. <laughs> That's what, he'll lift those up when he's trying to show off to the ladies and he'll rub them all over her back like that. Oh, <laughs> now, looking at her too, she's pretty wide in the old back end here, which I yep. never say that at home for you married men. <laughs> never look at her and say, you're pretty wide in the back end. That doesn't work out well. <laughs> Do you think that maybe she's possibly been bred again? This yeah, season? yeah, she could have. Um, I didn't really try nearly as hard this um, past spring to try to get them to do it, just because I honestly kind of wanted to see if they would do it on their own. Gotcha. Um, but she had already laid her clutch, and I think they were pretty close, if not already hatching this time last summer. So okay, so you think we probably missed this year as we're yeah, trying to figure out yeah. what makes them go? Like, I, I just let them be completely on a timer, just undone this year just to kind of an experiment last year i did a lot i was a lot more involved with them every day but um that kind of just goes to show that it takes a lot of work to make these kinds of things it doesn't just happen <laughs> no and now when you're talking about these big lizards and, and tegus as pets and again you're a, you're a big lizard guy and i often refer to colin in the shop if somebody wants a big lizard where do tegus rank like like if you said somebody comes in and says colin I want to get a big lizard, like a nice sized large lizard. We're talking tegus, iguanas, niles, black, black throats if we had extra ones, you know, savannas, kind of where do these rank in the yeah. east to care for and, and that kind of thing. So, I mean, they're definitely not exactly a beginner reptile by yeah. any means. Um, I would Was not... there any big lizard that is? No, not really. <laughs> um, like, I would definitely recommend anybody to get a bearded dragon or something like that before you venture into this territory, because this yeah. is definitely kind of expert level stuff. Um, but the big difference that I've kind of found between tegus and monitors, um, and you have more experience with alligators than I do, so I can't really say on that one, but tegus definitely seem to bond with their owner. Um, well, so like, he kind of seems to know me, and I can right. tell he acts differently around other people, and so does Tammy. She doesn't have the slightest care when I pick her up, but I can tell she gets a little uneasy when others are handling her. Um, and so they're aware of, of individual people, and I don't know if that's by scent or just visual, um, but the monitors don't seem to do that. They are very individual, you know, gotcha. I'm on, out for myself. Don't care who you are. I might not. They might not perceive you as a threat, but they definitely don't bond to you like a tegu does. So you say you find tegu is probably more rewarding as a pet. Just yes, because so of that. Bond. If you're looking for something that's going to be kind of like a dog and have that relationship, I would definitely suggest a tegu. But um, monitors have their own uh, very interesting quirks, like just how um, independent they are, you know, yeah. and the way that they really don't need anything else. Like, uh, they're, they're very interesting to watch. Probably, I would say monitors are a little bit more intelligent than uh, tegus, but tegus are a lot more social and Fair a enough. lot more emotional. Well, and I know these guys don't poop on you as babies as much as an alligator. No, no. So I like them for that because they're, they're a lot calmer. Never been crapped on and been bit yeah. by the same alligator in thirty seconds. Yeah. that kind of turned you off of them a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 that's that's one thing I like to say. Tegus, even though they can be crazy and they can be mean, like any yeah. animal can, I think they're a lot more in control of themselves. It's not spastic wild movements. And I do remember when you when these first hatched, when you grab one, they'd be crazy. And I remember talking to you about that. And the big thing was kind of letting them run through your hand and playing that jug with them at first, letting them calm down a little bit, and not trying to like grab them and restrain them and hold on yeah, to them. Yeah. Let them have a their place space. to put their feet yeah. and let them kind of run through your hand and not like, oh, I'm going to dominate you. Yeah. If you and, go in and you just boom like that, they're yeah. going to freak out, you know. But if you scoop them and you just kind of let them do their thing, then they're very good animals. You see how they'll even go to sleep if you rub them on their head. Yeah. Like that. Guys, I love these. You know, they and I love don't. That. I don't know as much about them as I wish I did, because this is something I kind of got into later. But fortunately, we got Colin here to kind of teach me along and help us out. We're setting people up. We did sell a lot of these last year, and everybody that we sold them to, I don't think anybody ever contacts had a problem. No, not a single Most people person. Most people contacted, hey, this thing is great, and they were really happy to get 
get these neat animals. Another channel, if you want to learn more about tegus, that I would recommend is look up a channel called MacGyver. Yeah. Now, no, it's not the MacGyver TV show from the 80s. There is MacGyver the Tegu, and that guy uh, that owns yeah. MacGyver has done a ton of work, and it shows you the potential of these animals if you work with them. It comes when it's called. I think it has a few basic tricks it does. Yeah. It, it's, it literally is like having a dog. Yeah. It's really cool. It free ranges in his house and yard most of the time, I believe. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. So Very similar to Tammy, except I think it's more of a personal at-home pet, so they spend right. more time with it. We don't, unfortunately, yeah. do that here. We're limited by time with just the quantity of animals. But exactly. as you see, she gets handled enough to where she does not really care. <laughs> no, she doesn't. I, I've taken her to educational talks here at the local college at K-State. I've done birthday parties with her. And I've done, like, local events where just, like, charity drives and stuff. And, like I said, I've taken her to expos, things like that. So she has been handled by numerous, numerous strangers who don't know anything about reptiles. Right. You know? And... She doesn't seem to care. Fine. She really just wants to burrow down and go to sleep. That's all she's trying to do. So she's lazy is what we're saying. She's <laughs> if she could sleep all day and wake up briefly to eat, that would be her day. And that's so pretty much what she does. They may be more like a cat than a dog, I guess. Uh, Kurt, you got any questions for us? Yeah, what do they uh, eat? Anything they can get in their mouth. Um, that is one, that's an interesting thing to talk about with these guys compared to monitors is they're a lot more omnivorous. Monitors will turn their nose up at any fruit, vegetable kind of stuff. These guys will eat um, plenty of fruits. Um, they really like fruits, especially like uh, cherries are her favorite food. She loves cherries. Love cherries. Um, things that are brightly colored like strawberries, uh, blueberries, things like that. They'll, they'll eat those up. Um, they're, they're very omnivorous, but they definitely uh, love their meat. So... Um, they like to eat rodents. Uh, they love chasing things down like that. They'll eat insects when they're smaller. It's just not really worth it when they're that size to go chasing after a cricket. Um, but they'll eat like... <laughs> kind of trying to yeah, this is the smaller Paraguayan red. Just get them all out here for you. So this show. is a Paraguayan red. What's really the difference? I mean, I can see the striping on it and everything else. Yeah, so it's just a different locality. Um, and just like this one over here is a black and white, but it, it's from a different locality also to where they uh, chalk Cohen. Um, and so they have these white heads, and they get a little bit bigger. That's actually the largest uh, subspe or that variety of them. These guys get massive when they're fully grown. Come here, little buddy. Uh, you can see how easy they are to handle. They don't really mind being picked up too much. They do have very strong jaws. I do know that. Yeah. So you, you do don't not want to get, get bit. bit. <laughs> <laughs> if you get bit. You're probably going to have stitches. A lot of crushing force and a lot of, yeah. a lot of sharp teeth. Yeah, so. those, those teeth, I have seen them just bite through a mouse like butter. Like, just sheer. It's, it's impressive. It's a good thing they have a nice disposition most of the time. Yes. But, uh, so anyway, there you go. Some big lizards. Hope we'll bring us some more lizards on this channel for Olympus Reptiles. And you'll probably see some of the things that we do a lot of and Colin does less of, hopefully on Classy Herx. As you kind of start seeing some cross-filming on these two channels as we're kind of bringing everything at the shop together. So I hope you guys enjoy seeing that. Let us know what you think. If there's other big lizards or lizards you want to see, we literally have a little bit of everything at this shop. I mean, I'd like to do videos with black throat monitors one day, some chameleon videos. We all like chameleons. Uh, some leopard geckos, because Cole's been bleeding leopard geckos for a long time. Oh, yeah. Some bearded dragons and there more. So we got a lot of cool things coming. So make sure and uh, stay with us. And I won't just share my balls. I'll give you all hers. Yeah, that happened. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.